had small money, small uh, house, small asset, and that person was upset, sick and tired, being kind of small in his own mind, right? But that person didn't know how much uh, blessings that person had. Okay? So as a result, as many of us start thinking, got disappointed, become miserable, and he met uh, another person, right? <clears throat> that person was a blind person. Okay? And he met that person. He says, uh, how's your day going? He said, man, I'm sick and tired. No money, small house, you know, no fun, right? That was his complaint. Blind man said, oh, but still you are richer than me. He says, I don't think so. He says, well, I have money. You need money? I have lots of money, okay, <clears throat> given by, by charities and some people. How about if we trade something that you have and I have? He says, for money, I will trade anything, okay? I need money. He says, I'll give you quarter million dollars. Just give me your one eye. And now the person thinks, oh man, I don't think I can do it. He says, you were complaining about money, man. I'm giving you quarter million dollars. <coughs> What's wrong? I <clears throat> then he says, how about half a million dollars? Give me your eye so you can see this world. He says, well, no, 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 no. He says, then stop crying. You have what is not even somebody even can't even purchase. You have so much value, valuable stuff. Right? Sometimes we forget our blessing. Okay? You cannot. Once you forget your blessing, you focus and, and lose focus and forget about life. You compromise life. You insult life when you forget your blessing. So make a list of good things you feel good about, you're honorable about, proud about in your life. If you are in good health, that is one of the most powerful blessing. Health is not for sale. If you have good family, family is not for sale. If you have good kids and if you have some good knowledge, if you have some good uh, habits and uh, good talents, all those things are not for sale. You have everything, but you need to expand that by focusing on blessing. If you focus on what you don't have, every single day you attract more misery in your life and end up nowhere end up at the worst point where you forget about living, okay, thinking about all the material. So that's the, <clears throat> the, the side note I want to start <clears throat> Now in our business, number one concern that people have, they want to grow. Anybody not interested in growth? <clears throat> Everybody want to grow, okay. Next thing, People want to have steady client base. Anybody not interested in clients? Next thing in business, people want to have steady income because family and household run with steady income. <clears throat> people want to have some security in the business. So that is passive income. Once you grow, build a team, passive income keeps coming. Sometimes if you personally don't produce any given month, money will still come. <clears throat> That's security. An asset. Any business we want to build, we want to be a real owner of that business. And we want to be in a situation in control where we can sell our business and retire or pass up to somebody or whatever we want to do with that asset. <clears throat> okay, That's what people want. That comes out when you build a huge army, okay, and your code becomes really, really valuable. If you're making half million dollar income in double GFG, your double GFG code can sell for 1.5 million. Three years of your annual passive income, that's your code value, rough idea. But if there are two or three buyers, it could be two million. Okay, <clears throat> so before you sell your code, you need to tell 
enough people so you can have more people to to ready to buy right so that's the ownership asset right ownership freedom right now all these things come from the first step okay and first step is how's your recruiting going okay how's your recruiting going okay <clears throat> there are two types of recruiting activity okay that all of us focus on Recruiting is the game of an excited person. That's why I had your side note. Nobody want to join a miserable, negative, non-believer, non-excited person. I know you have the world class, class presentation. Still people will not join if your body language won't show energy, belief, excitement, and, and all those good things. People join presentation is a way of communication presentation has been given to you as a tool to connect with the, the person sitting across the table but people <clears throat> join not because the presentation only people join many many reasons because they like you as a presenter they like your belief they see possibility they see hope they see you can take them somewhere. All those things are involved before somebody joins the business. Okay, so it's an exciting person's game, recruiting. Never, ever, ever you forget that. Okay, <clears throat> so recruiting brings you all the things we spoke about. Okay, now there are personal. Okay, you always focus on two. You always add minimum every single month. And team recruiting is also your responsibility to drive. Now, when your team, some of you may have a team who is not recruiting. Your team is not recruiting. What are your, what are your solution? Your solution is go back and boost your personal recruiting. Why? Personal recruiting will give you right people who are actually willing to grow in the business and build this business okay <clears throat> but there are people who try to who try to make a person who champion who's not willing to i call that uh, dead soul there are dead souls in our world you no matter how hard you want them to win they will not do anything. Okay, anybody have those great people? <laughs> okay, no, what do you do? If you keep like hitting your head with the dead soul, you become dead soul as well. Okay, you can't afford to become a dead soul. So, can we punish these people? No, this is their choice. You cannot force punish anybody in this world. We live in the free world. So, what do you do? You go back to personal recruiting. Personal <clears throat> recruiting will help you find some exciting souls. And you see, your team recruiting goes up again. That's how simple it is. But some of you may be stuck forever. Why? Because you just think these souls will become five star players one day. You can believe that no matter how long you want to believe. But two types of souls exciting and dead souls. Okay. <clears throat> we wish everybody become a champion. We love, we have the same training for everybody. Same teacher. Some bring A, some bring B. You recently got the, the scores from school. Some bring C, some bring D. Some even don't pass anything. <clears throat> quit the school same teacher it's a matter of choice okay kids you can force up to certain level to do things but as adults we cannot force anybody so the winning decision should come inside from you from your inside okay no matter how good trainer you are if you're not willing to win nobody can make it happen so <clears throat> whenever your team recruiting goes down simple answer Stop being frustrated. 
Stop complaining about your dead soul. Don't tell the stories to your appliance. This guy is not doing anything. I don't know what to do. Stop doing that. Go back, work on your personal list, and get the personal recruiting going, and you will have the team recruiting going. We have all type of examples in the business. People start for one year, two years, three years. Lots of SMDs in Canada, hundreds of SMDs in Canada are trying to make Dead Souls champion. You can keep trying that as long as you want, but if they don't want to win, you can't make them win. Even your child, if your child don't want to win, you cannot make it. Win. Have you seen there are well-educated parents doing great and kids are just crap? Have you seen that? Do you think parents forgot about telling them good things? No, it's the matter of choice. Out of their experience and their friendship circle, that's what they choose to do. They become, you know, gangsters or drugsters, whatever they choose to do, lazy. I, I lately heard from, uh, from some of my friends in Canada that their kids are sleeping until noon or one or two o'clock and we needed some help to pass some licenses. Young kids are not willing to help the parents to pass the license. I said, oh my God, what do you do with these type of people? Okay, your own child, not willing to do anything. It's a crisis for a parent, but that's the matter of choice. Okay, one advice I give to those friends, kick this dude out right now. Okay, you should not feed this dead soul as, as your child, if the person is not taking any responsibility. Okay, put them out, let them play the life and, and figure it out. Once they have some pain, they will, they will understand. It's their personal decision, by the way. <clears throat> now, once you have a personal recruit, okay, some people do wrong communication. They are not very aware about their communication. As a result, they kill their high potential people. Okay, what is that? <clears throat> Communication should reflect dream self. Okay, Communication must reflect dream self. Okay, this is possible. We can do this. I want to see you doing this. It's a faster word. It's a real life game. Okay, when you sell somebody dream, people take action and become better. Okay, that's what I do every day. Sell people that mean this is possible for you. Work a little more hard. This is possible for you. I want that for me. I want somebody keep telling me that you can do better than this. Next year you can be at this income. Next year your team will look like this. I want that. That keeps me focused. <clears throat> you do the proper communication that sells a dream to new recruit. Okay, that shines some light in their eyes. That should be your communication. Number two, hope giving. Okay, <clears throat> Some trainers talk so casual, I don't see any hope in their own conversation. Okay, They look like, like dead souls themselves. If your talk is not powerful, how can you give somebody hope? Right? <clears throat> Next thing, vision building. Okay, Some people have problems. Okay, thinking small, it's a known problem. Okay, I talk to people, if you think small, you live small, you stay small. Okay, you need to change your thinking, honestly speaking. Anybody who thinks big, oh, those are the only people who, who become big. <coughs> Why people don't grow in our business? Because they don't even think about being themselves, MD or SMD or EMD or CEO, they never think. They always believe it's not possible for them. Okay, it's your thinking problem. That's called mediocre thinking. Okay, abundance thinking is everything is available to you in this world if you will think a little bit bigger. Okay, and then once you think big, that thinking locks into your subconscious mind. Subconscious mind help you focus on right things to achieve those goals. Is thinking. Okay. <clears throat> Next, action driving. Okay, your communication should inspire people to take action. Don't tell people too complicated stories about this and that. 
simple conversation, tell them, well, we need to get eight to 10 presentations done. I want to see you become an associate. I want to see you doing high five. I want to see associate pen on your code. I want to see you qualifying for our July contest, $700. Anybody finish TT30. I want to see you pass your exam in one month and, and qualify for another $500. Okay, and when you drive that, you also get $500 per 3330. It's not just one 500. Anybody licensed in this room, if you do help two people do 3330 in July, you will get 1000. It's not 500. You help four people do 3330, you will get 2000. So that's the contest. <clears throat> and the last is to make sure your communication inspires people to take action. And last is belief building. Okay, that's the bigger problem in our world. People don't believe in themselves. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sad about that. Why our society is like that? But that's what it is. I, you should help people believe in themselves. Every human being need somebody else to believe in them before they start believing in themselves. So you as a trainer, believe in your people, inspire them for action, give them hope and vision, right? And sell them the dream and you see the magic of proper communication. You see the magic, if you remember all these things, before you talk too much. I talk to some people, they hardly give me chance to talk, okay? They tell their story after story and never let me chance to give them any solution. Okay, so when you talk, be careful. Okay, be careful what you're talking and what the other person is needed, right? So this is the, the communication tools with, with the new people. We need to wake up and we need to implement these things to have better results. Now, once your communication is powerful, it will simply address that person to you and our weekly training. Okay, so now you ask for commitment. Okay, they see hope, they see the dream, they see the possibility, <clears throat> and you need to, as a leader, don't beg people to come to the training. As a leader, you need to tell people it's important that you show up, stay in command there, stay in command for good reason. New person don't understand the value of training. You as a trainer do. Anybody not coming to the training, I can guarantee you will die, not do anything. Anything. Okay? They will not do anything. That's the truth of the system, right? Anybody coming to the training, sooner or later, they will do something. Sooner, I have seen it happening with people. Okay? So bringing people, more and more people, all your new recruits to the training is very sensitive, is very powerful. Okay? <clears throat> but some of us forget on Wednesday that they need to call people about Thursday training. Does that happen? Yeah, some of us never have time to put a schedule on Wednesday. Okay? You look at my phone, I have a schedule. Okay? Remind people for Thursday training. I have scheduled time on Wednesday. So I call and I also have scheduled time for Thursday okay, to drive Thursday evening training. I call all my Besha people, okay, whoever are new or new recruits or, or in process. Okay. <clears throat> now, regular training. Okay. Regular training standard starts with you. Are you serious and fully committed? about our training as a licensed person, or you miss many, or you never think about your dress, or you never look professional, you always look casual, you always look tired, okay? And you're not looking, you know, energetic and shining and fresh and all those things, right? So what is training? Training means I have the chance to present myself as a team leader in front of my team once a week, and connect with them. <coughs> That's the core philosophy of training. And you show up lazy, tired, and you know, not excited, okay, improper uh, dress, okay, it's not a good presentation, okay. <clears throat> it is about 30 degrees and I have the jacket on, okay.
Okay, this is the discipline. This is the discipline, right? That we need to present to people so they will follow, right? <clears throat> so, number one, are you serious about the training? And how do you drive? Okay. Tell your new recruits as you tell your parents that you need to finish your homework in same language. You tell your new recruit you need to be at the training every single week, otherwise we will have no results. Oh, I'm busy, I have this, I know you have this and that, but I want you to make some adjustment, talk to your boss about the work time, or make some alternative for babysitting, whatever it is, right? <clears throat> so, and next team get together, right? <clears throat> On the training, people meet each other, people get inspired from each other, they get the energetic information and all the business strategies. Okay, sitting home is not possible for them to get it off. The environment, environment build people, not just the training. Environment build people. Okay, <clears throat> and Jaswinder is going to talk about that. Uh, training help you build a relation and a connection with the people. If your new recruit won't show up. How would you recruit, introduce that recruit to your SMD or MD or, or anybody else in the team, right? <clears throat> training uh, help people become confident, okay? To drive training, you don't beg from people, you lead them with confidence, tell them as a parent that they need to be at the training. People like that. People don't want weak leadership. People like strong leadership. Okay, so you need to stay in charge when you talk about this stuff. Okay, <clears throat> and, and the last thing is don't buy excuses. Okay, I had the biggest excuse. I was a 12 hour, seven days a year. Trip. I had tons of excuses to not to show up on training. But I knew without training, I will never understand. I was reminded a few times, that's it. Then I'm all in. <clears throat> so strong leadership is required on training. Okay, and anybody who have dream and they want to build a business big, you command them to register for Las Vegas. If they're not going to Las Vegas, you need to take it serious and get strong on that. Okay, don't take it casual. You are going, everybody else in your team is going. Okay, especially licensed people, nobody will stay in town. Okay, <clears throat> and uh, next is, uh, is fast start. Okay. I'm already out of time. <clears throat> Once you have the person, personal or, or team recruit consistently, recruiting number, proper communication, regular in training, it's so easy to fast start anybody who's going through that experience. Easy. Anybody going through other experience or experience that you, you know, make your own plan will stay confused and it's hard to fast start okay <clears throat> and why i fast start people because when i fast start people when i take them in the field okay and they they learn the real business there okay i want to give you a tip here about the fast start here's me and i have this new recruit john <laughs> John <laughs> recruited. <coughs> I tell John business plan meeting, share information with eight to ten people, explain him all the benefits I'm going to discuss in the next training. <coughs> and John gives me three names: sister, brother, <coughs> and a friend. I ask John. We need to go and talk to these people, give them information as soon as possible. When we want to do that, John says, let me talk to them first. I said, do you know how to talk? Well, I can tell them a little bit about the business. I said, no, a little bit is not enough. Okay. <clears throat> Some people say, you know what? I don't want to talk to my close people. Well, so here's the question. Here's the scenario. Okay. <clears throat> How if we don't go and talk to your sister? Month later, three weeks later, your sister buys life insurance from ABC agent, from some other company. 
you show up at dinner two months later, you see the policy from another company sitting at her table, and you are licensed. How would you feel? Well, that won't be that won't be good situation. Do you believe your sister is actually willing to help you? Is there any sister in the world who's not willing to help her brother? No. If that is the case, and you don't want to deal with the situation that she call ABC for her personal policy, okay, it's better we go and tell the sister, this is what you do, and this is how you can help him, and this is what it is. She may be interested in, in having something as a client, she may join the business, she may not join the business, but at least she knows she will not become client of somebody else. Okay, sounds reasonable, yes. Okay, call your sister, let's go and talk to her. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna explain her and you relax and learn. Okay, that's the fastest start tip. Okay, same thing with brother. Do you want your brother, if he wanna, he wanna sponsor his in-laws next month and call somebody else for travel insurance? No, okay? But if we never share the information, could it happen? Of course it will happen, okay? Are we here to force anybody? No, did I force you to join? No. Then, if we don't wanna deal with that scenario, let's go, share information with 15 minutes, call your brother, let's go share information. <clears throat> your friend, okay. John, how would you feel if your friend joins another uh, associate in, in WGFG and show up at the training three weeks from now? Well, that won't be a good situation. Well, if we never share information with your friend, could it happen? Yes, it could. Okay, call your friend, before something happens, let's go share information with your friend. Okay, the fast start tips. Is it, is it a complicated conversation I'm talking? It's so simple conversation, okay? But some of us like to do complication conversation. New recruit have no idea what you're talking about, okay? So wake up about your communication and understand how your communication impact. What is closing? I want to close with this question. What is closing? What is the closing of a new AMA? What is the closing of an insurance? What is the closing of investment? What is the closing of uh, a policy? Closing is having a right conversation. That's it. If you are not closing enough, you don't know how to talk. It's a straight, honest comment on that. Okay? What do you do? Come back and relearn the closing conversation. With that, thank you so much. But we shall come back.